Hello students. Today we are going to start with the next part of the part that is frogs and anatomy. In the first part we have already discussed the digestive system, respiratory system and circulatory system. In this video we are going to complete the rest of the physiological system. So the first system we are going to start with the control and coordination. We have two types of control and coordination one is the neural control and second one is the chemical control in the chemical control the different endocrine glands release the different hormones which control the different body physiologies and the neural control who actually stimulate the different body organs to perform to work to functions according to it so the first one is the endocrine system see this endocrine system is made up of different endocrine glands what are those glands they are present in the body of a frog let us see first of all this is the gland pituitary gland and here this is the pineal gland so this pituitary gland and the pineal gland they are present in the brain which release the different hormones uh, which mainly control all of the body's physiology and the other endocrine glands Next one, the thyroid gland. So, thyroid gland will release thyroxine hormone, who actually maintain the um, body's metabolism. Next one, parathyroid gland, who maintains the calcium balance in the body. Next one, thymus. Uh, the thymus is related to the immunological functions of the body. Next one, pancreatic islets, which release the hormones like insulin, glucagon, and all, who maintain our glucose metabolism. Next one, adrenals. This adrenal will release the hormones, which is maintaining the three F situation, that is fight, fright, and flight. So all these situations that will be maintained by the release of adrenaline and noradrenaline by the adrenal gland and the last one is the gonads. So the male gonad that is the testis and the female gonad that is the ovary who release the hormone who also help in the function of maturation of the gametes also and performance of the gametes also. So, this gonads that will release the hormones, it is acting as endocrine gland as well as it is the main or chief site for the development formation of the gametes too. So, these are the different endocrine glands present in the body of the frog to maintain the different body's function physiologies. We don't need it in detail. Uh, what are the hormones who will maintain all of it? It is not needed. Only for the human, we require uh, endocrine glands, and all of the endocrine glands we have a different, complete different chapter that is uh, chemical control and integration. So, that chapter we will study in detail what are the uh, endocrine glands and their hormones of human we don't need for the frog so just how many glands are present only that thing you can remember now after that let us move to the nervous system so nervous system basically is made up of uh, three parts first one is the central nervous system second one it is the peripheral nervous system and we have in case of frog the autonomic nervous system that we have two types of system one is the sympathetic and another is the parasympathetic nervous system so first of all let us see the central nervous system which is made up of the brain and the spinal cord right so suppose this is the brain and here this is the spinal cord so this brain is divided into three parts. What are the three parts? See, so first of all, the brain have the four part, four brain part. So this is the four brain. Four brain have two olfactory lobes. These are the two olfactory lobes. Two cerebral hemisphere. These are the two parts. This is the cerebral hemisphere and one unpaired diencephalon. So this is the diencephalon, right? So this makes form the forebrain next one midbrain so this midbrain have two optic lobes and the crura cerebri crura cerebri is nothing but the tract arise from the two lobes that are the two optic lobes so from the optic lobes the tract they are arising they are known as the crura cerebri so here these are the two optic lobes 
these are the two tracks these are nothing but the exons they are the crura cerebri next one the last part is the hindbrain hindbrain have how many parts see first one this is the cerebellum this is the cerebellum and the next part here in this part this is the medulla oblongata right so this form the whole brain brain have three parts forebrain midbrain and hindbrain so in the forebrain we have two olfactory lobes two cerebral hemisphere and one unpaired diencephalon midbrain have two optic lobes and crura cerebri and hindbrain have the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata next one spinal cord this is the spinal cord which will arise from the medulla oblongata uh, in the medulla oblongata itself it is extending to form the spinal cord so this spinal cord is associated with one function what is the function reflex action whenever we are in the emergency the performance we do this is called as the reflex action we will see in detail what is reflex action later so it is related with the reflex action so spinal cord it is a short thick and cylindrical uh, concerned with the reflex action so this medulla oblongata actually extend from one um, a hole from the skull uh, skull bones that is known as the foramen magna so from the foramen magna the medulla oblongata will extend to form the spinal cord so this form the central nervous system after that just see the nerve that arise from the brain and the spinal cord that are known as the cranial nerve and the spinal accessory nerve so uh, yeah that will be known as a somatic neural system somatic neural system will include the different nerves that will that will uh, be the nerve from the brain so the nerve arise from the brain they are known as the cranial nerves there are 10 pairs of cranial nerves present in case of human this is 12 pairs of cranial nerve and if it is a spinal nerves the nerve arise from the spinal cord they are known as the spinal nerves how many spinal nerves frogs have same that is 10 pairs now after that autonomic nervous system that is sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system which is related to our emergency situation whenever we are in the danger how many things how many performance or how the metabolism changes that will be included within the autonomic nervous system now after that let us move to the sense organs how many sense organs they have first of all in the head region they have the eye eye is the simple eye this eye have the three eyelids upper eyelid lower eyelid and a horizontal flap that is known as the nictitating membrane with the help of the nictitating membrane they can see under water so this is the eye but this is a simple eye next one see this is the second sensory organ that is ear ear represents the tympanum that tympanum is actually the front part of the middle ear in the middle ear there is only one ear ossicle that is known as columella oris and then in the hindbrain uh, sorry in the internal ear they are going to have two semicircular canal and along with that that is also have the organ of balance that is vestibular apparatus now after that see the next one that is the olfactory lobes so this olfactory receptors oh, sorry there is olfactory receptor that is present in the nasal septum so in the nostril region just behind this the epithelial cells are sensitive to different chemicals volatile chemicals that makes that forms the olfactory receptors next one gustator receptor gustator receptor means taste receptor taste receptor means the tongue is able to sense the taste of the chemical taste of the food it takes okay last one is the tango receptor tango receptor means tactile receptor with the help of the tactile receptor they can able to uh, understand the stress pressure touch uh, etc in their skin throughout the body they are going to have the tango receptor so that forms the neural control and coordination along with that we have seen the endocrine system also we don't need in detail but then also we have to see a little so i have discussed this thing after that let us move to the next system that is urinogenital system
after that let us see the next system that is a urinogenital system why I actually I have merged both this excretory system and reproductive system together we will see because in case of the frog male frog the excretory system and the reproductive system they are present together actually okay so we will see in case of first of all male frog okay so in case of male frog rather they have separate excretory uh, system and reproductive system uh, they are present together and the ureter they are collecting the gametes as well as urine together so that's why we will see both of them together so first of all just to see there uh, there are a pair of testes okay the testes are present and this testes they are actually buried in the fat bodies okay so here the fat bodies are present so this fat bodies completely end with the testis so from this inside the testis there are highly coiled seminiferous tubules are present okay so this way uh, highly coiled seminiferous tubules are there so this seminiferous tubules will produce the spermatozoa or the male gamete so this is the semini ferrous tubule okay so this seminiferous tubule will produce the spermatozoa inside it okay suppose here the spermatozoa they are being formed okay then after that this seminiferous tubule which is producing the spermatozoa they are going to come outside the testis right so whenever it is coming outside the testis what we can call it they are now known as the vasa efferentia so there are around 10 to 12 vasa efferentia present they are actually collecting the male gamete okay into the two large kidneys okay so here this is the kidney so this kidney will collect the male gamete as well okay so here the kidneys will collect the both the kidneys will of same size this kidneys will collect the male gamete here so this kidney this type of kidney what we can call it this kidney is the mesonephric kidney okay so this mesonephric kidney actually have a coiled structure unit which have these are known as the nephrons okay so inside the kidneys the unit nephron is present okay nephron is present right inside the kidneys who will filter out the urea that organism frog is ureotelic but their larval stage that is a tadpole tadpole is ammonotelic okay we will see in detail see this nephrons will produce uh, the will filter out the urea from the blood so this is the canal present here see you can find out here that this will form a candle like structure okay so this is one candle this candle is called as the beater's candle okay and this beater's candle suppose this is the beater's candle who will collect the male gametes and eventually this male gamete is going to mix with the urine okay so here the urine that is collected out okay by uh, another tube which is going to join here like this okay and eventually it is coming out so this is the ureter okay so first of all this is the tract which is collecting the urine okay so this blue part this is this is going to collect the urine right and this is the black part which is collecting the male gamete okay so this will collect the gamete what is this called as this is known as bidder's canal okay remember that name is important so bidder's canal which is collecting the male gamete and this canal which is collecting the urine they are eventually meet okay and both of them they are coming out so they are coming outside okay
okay which is collecting now both the urine and the gamut together what is this this will be known as the ureter okay so this ureter we can also call as the urino genital duct right so urinogenital duct that will collect the male gamut as well as the uh, urine together now after that both this urine and the male gamut that will be collected in one large structure this is actually the rectum okay so this is the rectum here there is a large bilobe structure present this is the urinary bladder okay and after that here this is the cloaca or the cloacal aperture who will release the urine also male gamete also as well as the fecal matter also because this rectum is the part of the large intestine okay so here this rectum will collect the fecal matter urine as well as the uh, as well as the male gamete together in the rectum urine is filled in the urinary bladder and whenever they need to release the uh, all the three things then they can release it with the help of this cloaca right so remember that if it is coming to the male frog remember uh, if first of all we'll see the excretory system okay so in case of this excretory system first thing what we need to know that this frog frog is ureotelic right so this is ureotelic but the larva that is the tadpole this tadpole is ammonotelic right ammonotelic means they're releasing ammonia and if it is frog they're releasing urea okay so this is the formula of urea okay so this tadpole which is ammonotelic because it is aquatic now after that the kidney okay so remember the excretory organ is made up of a pair of kidney this kidney is going to have highly called uh, uh sorry this this is the kidney so this kidney have the nephrons the kidney is mesonephric kidney okay then after that the next part that is the ureter a pair of ureter which is also known as the urinogenital duct after that it is going to have the urinary bladder and this urinary bladder will finally open its secretion into the rectum and via cloaca it will release outside okay so this is the structured excretory system if you see the next system that is the reproductive system see the male reproductive system so this male reproductive system is made up of a pair of testes these testes are embedded in the fat bodies okay this testes inside the testes highly coiled seminiferous tubules are present so that that seminiferous tubule will produce the male gametes eventually via the vasa efferentia so here this is the vasa efferentia so around 10 to 12 vasa efferentia will collect the male gamete and it will come outside and join eventually into the urinary duct so here this duct in the region of the kidney that is known as the bidder scanner so they have the pair of testes then after that they have the vasa efferentia which will collect the male gamete to the kidney in the kidney the bidder's canal they will collect the male gamete mixed with the urine and via the same that is ureter here also ureter here also this is the common duct okay so this ureter will collect the male gamete and eventually via the rectum it will come outside via cloaca okay now just see one thing you have to know this male or male reproductive system they lack the male copulatory organ or the penis is not present so copulatory organ remember that copulatory 
organ is absent. Okay, and remember that copulatory organ is absent in males. Okay, so that's why what type of fertilization it will have? It will have the external fertilization. But then also the male and the female, it seems like um, that male during the breeding season in the index finger, they're developing a copulatory pad. Okay, and with the help of what? The uh, male organism holds the female organism and it seems like they're uh, mating. But actually they're not mating. What they're actually doing, the male and the female, they uh, come to the region of the water, male holds the female and whenever the female is releasing the female gamete, at the same time, male also release the male gamete. Otherwise, if they are not attached to each other, then the female will lay the eggs, they she will come out then the male will go male will release the male gamete then meeting a male and female gamete will not be possible so that's why male develop the copulatory pad during the breeding season in the four limb in the index finger of the four limb they hold the uh, female they release the male and the female gamete together in the water and they can have the external fertilization the reason why they don't have the internal fertilization that reason is the male lack the male copulatory organ so that's why they have the uh, they have the uh, external fertilization if it's uh, in case of the male frog then only the excretory and the reproductive system are present together but if it is the female reproductive system then it is obviously the ureter that will collect only the urine and for the release of the eggs they will have separate ducts okay so let's just see the female reproductive organ and the process of fertilization